In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit photos in Darkroom on the iPad. So let's get into it. Here we are inside Darkroom on my iPad and I have simply just made a new album on the left hand side called Tutorial and I've added some photos into this album. In another video, I'll talk about albums and how to add photos. But just for the purposes of this video, we're going to get right in there and we're going to click on this photo. Simply just tap on the photo and it comes up. This is the main work area where you do all your photo editing inside Darkroom. Over on this side, these are the main tools where we're going to crop. We've got presets and I'll talk you through all these things. If we click this button, it's the back button and simply it's just going to take us back to our album. So we'll just tap into the photo again. This button hides this toolbar of all our current photos in our album. And straight away, I always press that button because you want as much real estate as possible on your iPad to work. If I want to favor this photo, I hit the heart. These three buttons, I'm going to talk about this at a later date because there's tons of options here. This is where we can add a different album, show recents, we can copy edits, we can rotate this photo just like this. But we don't want to do that, so we'll come down here at the bottom, that's the back button. If we realise I do want to rotate it, we'll click on this, but we don't, so we'll hit back again. We can delete this photo if we want, and it says, do you want to delete it? Don't allow, I don't delete that. And then this is where, where we can flag photos or reject photos, and then we've looked at these two things. And then this button will show us our before and after edits. It doesn't do anything at the minute, and that's because we've got no before and after edits. So straight away, we're gonna come down to the first tool, and it's the crop tool. And there's a few different things we could do here. We could use our different aspect ratios. We could have grid options. And normally, when we're working on grid options, I like to do three by three. There is quite a few grid options. Aspect ratio, as shot, you can free transform using your Apple Pencil or your fingers as shot you can square there's lots of different ones instagram seven by five and even though that's seven by five we'll make that bigger i think what i'm going to do though is just as shot this was shot from a drone a dji mavic 2 pro if we want we can straighten the picture and that will crop in while it does that just hit our undo button to do that and then we can change the horizontal alignment just by moving your finger. It's really, really nice <laughs> to do this on the iPad or the vertical alignment too. I'm just going to hit back. The one function I would like to see Darkroom operate is a straightened horizon. You do have it in Adobe Lightroom where you simply tap a point and then draw a line and it will automatically straighten the horizon. But we'll have to do with using this tool and if you make a mistake or you don't want that, you can press that X or undo. If I want to try to straighten this horizon, I will click on the 8 by 8 grid. And what that's going to allow us to do, it gives us more grid lines. And I'm just going to use this straighten. And I'm going to look at this line here. And I'm just going to try to straighten it along this water line. And I think that looks quite good. I'll bring it back to the 3 by 3 grid. I'll hit done. And that's going to save that crop. And I'm happy with that. I do think it looks in line. I'm just going to hit that icon back just so we can see our full photo. And yep, I'm happy with that. If we go down to the next button, it's presets. I've got a few favorites here. Oh, that looks quite nice. I wasn't expecting that to look quite nice. If you want, this is where this button comes in handy now. You can click on before and after. And that preset isn't bad. I never use this button because if we simply tap anywhere in this dark area with one finger, that will show you a before and after. Black and white, I definitely don't like that as much. And some, I have some save filters, a spring seal. This is from a Star Wars poster, 2022. And that's for a YouTube video. That must have been very vibrant. That'll be a real standout preset that. Here's some presets Darkroom have already made. And I really like that one for this photo. I think it's a little dark, but for a starting point, I really, there's something about that, the way it brings out the blues and the greens. and even if you don't want to do anything in Darkroom yourself, a lot of these presets, and again, you can tap anywhere on the picture. That's quite nice too. Again, as a starting point. Then we've got Cinematic Instant. Some of these look quite faded. X Pro. Go down to Landscapes. This is where you would think this. some of these presets would shine. And that's not too bad. And that's quite nice. Then we've got portraits. We've got black and white. And then we've got duotone down here. And that's mad, but definitely not what we want. 
we will go up and we'll just click on the original. And for the purposes of this video, I'll pick a preset. And there is a preset here. I quite like this one. Again, we'll tap my finger to show before and after. That's a good starting point. And even if you want, we can click into this and maybe bring the strength down. You can bring it down to zero, up to 100%, or even say 50%, somewhere in between. And I quite like what it's doing there. Now, if we go down to the next adjustment, you will see the adjustments that that preset is making. You can see it's boosted the contrast, the sharpness, a wee bit of vignetting. And then if we click into some of these other things, you'll see it's changed some of the colors. And I quite like that again before and after. I would nearly be happy enough to say I'm happy with that photo. And if that was the case, I could export it, just save it. Replaces the original, but you can be reverted at any time. Normally, I like saving it as a copy and then it keeps the original and then it makes a new one. And if we simply hit back, what's lovely about Darkroom is you can now see we've got our save copy. And if we hit back, we've got our original. You know it's our original because yes, we made it a favorite by clicking the heart, but it's also got this pencil icon. And that means that we can tap into it. And that is the picture that has all of our adjustments. And that's how you know a photo has been edited. And if you're wondering where this photo was taken, it was taken in the north coast of Northern Ireland. And this here is a famous rock. It's called the Elephant Rock. I don't know if you can notice. It looks a bit like an elephant. More so when you're standing on the beach looking this way. It looks a bit like an elephant. And that's its trunk coming down here. There you go. There's a bit of information for you that you may or may not have wanted. We'll tap into the next photo and it's another drone shot and it's another drone shot from the north coast of Northern Ireland. If you're a regular in my channel, you'll know it's one of my favorite places. I'll tap this button just to hide that to give us more real estate to work in. We'll go into the crop. We'll go to the 8x8 grid and clearly here you can see it's just running a little off and I'm going to straighten this photo up. And again, this is where I would just love to click a line just like Lightroom, where we can straighten that. But I think if we just move it ever so slightly. Yep, that's okay. And I am going to, and just looking up here, we can rotate our photo here. We can even flip it like that. But I just wanted to straighten it ever so slightly. And we'll click on our three by three grid. I might be tempted just to move this down a little. So you can really see it's on the horizon and then maybe move it this way a little. It's just using the rule of thirds. That sun is nearly in the middle there at our rule of thirds. And this castle or ruins of a castle is down here. We are losing some detail, but we'll click done to see how that looks. And that's quite nice. I might be tempted just to crop it in a little bit more because I'm not just happy about that bit of land coming and then that will really mean well let me just put that sun right on the rule of thirds you can see it's right in the horizon going to hit done and that is looking really really nice presets we looked at presets in the last video so we'll maybe bring it straight down to the adjustments and sometimes i'll just move with my finger on some adjustments sometimes the more and more you play with darkroom you you the more you know the ones to play with, if that makes sense. Brightness, I know I'm not really going to use that in this one because I know this one, the contrast, if we bring up, the, you can bring the contrast down, but we bring it up, it's really starting to bring out those oranges and you don't want to go mad with it. Hello? Hello, Andrew. Going mad with it does look very, very good. Very good in this instant. Uh, I'm certainly maybe bring it up to about 50 and you can tap if you want to fine tune it or you've got OCD like me and you want it to be 50 precisely you can just tap it either side and that'll go one at a time clarity sometimes I don't use clarity because I think it, it just takes away the realisticness of the photo highlights I don't think I'm going to use shadows we can bring the shadows up and you can really see the detail coming into this photo and it's amazing the detail we get in this photo. And this isn't a raw photo. This is just a normal JPEG. And we're going to bring it right down. But I'm, I really like the way this is silhouetted here. By bringing this up, I think it's losing something off the image. And a lot, a lot of the time, editing is just personal preference, the whites. And if I move the slider and double tap on the circle, it'll bring it back into the middle. And I might be tempted 
just to bring the darks down ever so slightly. The saturation, again, sometimes it can look too unrealistic, but the vibrance, sometimes I like bringing up a little, and again, we'll go mad with that or take it out, but I think for this photo, we'll just bring it up maybe to about 30. We can bring the temperature up just a little. That's Northern Ireland, but it's now looking like uh, the Mediterranean. And again, with one finger, that's what we had. That's what we have now. That's what we had. That's what we have now. I think it's turned into a really nice photo. We can tint it and we're going to play with. We can add fade, but definitely not for this photo. We can add green again. I don't think that would look well. We could add a wee bit of a finette on this and it wouldn't go mad because that looks again unrealistic. I might be tempted just to bring it up ever so slightly. And I don't think this photo needs too much sharpness. I might bring it up just a little and highlights and shadows will not really worry about about that in this photo. We'll bring it down and again, we'll look at this in another video with curves. I don't want to worry about. We'll spend a second in the color tab here and we'll click. The lovely thing about this is you can click on the reds, the oranges, the different colors and change them individually. For something like this, the oranges, I might just bring up the saturation just ever so much, just maybe 10 and bring the hue down, not too much because then it'll go too too ready, that's too yellow. Maybe just by bringing it up with that orange, it's just enough. Maybe just, maybe even the 20 ever so slightly. And then we'll get into color grading. We'll get into frames in another video and history. And that was our crop. And if we just tap here, you'll get the full image. And then by putting one finger on it before, take the finger off after, before, after and that really has changed up this photo an awful lot it's brought this lovely orange in and some people might call this cheating but this is how i remember the photo certainly and it just really really enhances that photo well and we just tap down there it brings up our presets and if we hit back we can do that and you'll see again we haven't favorited we haven't hit the heart button but you know we've edited this photo because there is a pencil to say there it's edited it and the only difference in the rest of these photos all these photos are jpeg apart from this one here and that's got an r on it and that's because that is a raw photo and i was going to look at all these photos but uh, this has taken longer than I expected. So we'll maybe just leave it there for today and maybe edit some of these photos at a later date. So there you have it. There's going to be more videos coming out in Darkroom soon. And if you like this video, give it a like. I'd appreciate that. And until the next time, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.